Okay, so really, really basic stuff uh, for Revit. Okay, so the first thing uh, I want to quickly talk is uh, Revit is might not be the best program if you want to do the freeform modeling. Um, SketchUp or Rhino is a better choice, uh, but Revit does give you a lot of robust tools. Uh, you can quickly create some basic form. Uh, the nice thing is everything is beam oriented. You can always convert this model into walls, windows, in a relatively easy way, right? So this 30 minutes demo, I just want to focus on a few uh, hot keys or the tricks which could help you a lot uh, when you start to model this, follow my tutorials. So the first thing I like to highlight is in the messing modeling uh, tag, so if I create an in-place messing, I will start with a really simple box. Okay, we we'll just create a box here. Oops, I think I make the box a little bit too big, like this big, okay? So once you create a box, and click um, maybe create a solid for now. You can see the box right here show up. The first key I want to show you is uh, the tab, T-A-B, tab key. Tab key is really your friend. Uh, so if you, for example, select a face, right, and then if you use a tab key, you can cycle through the selection. See that? So it really depends on where you put your cursor if you're using the tab key, it gave you the different selection options. Uh, so this could be really handy. Sometimes, you know, if I want to select the facade using the tab key, once you highlight the facade, then I can move the facade forward, right? But if I want to, you know, just click this edge, I can move the edge up, up and down. If I use the tab key again, I can cycle through the selection in other component. Right? Sometimes you want to see like the entire objects. Sometimes you only want to see like a face. Uh, so the type key will allow you to sort of switch uh, between these options. All right? It's uh, not as easy as other program, but you no, know, it's not too bad. As long as you understand the type is option, then you can easily select. The component you want to manipulate. All right, so that's the first trick. Tab. The second trick I want to show you is when you work on the massing model, uh, you probably don't really care too much about accuracy, like how many inches. But how sometimes you need a rough number, right? So Revit does allow you to click the dimension. Uh, so here is the twenty-eight. So I will just type thirty feet. Enter is automatically switch uh, or move uh, the lens uh, to match that new dimension you put in. Uh, so this could be really convenient. Everything is parametric. Uh, you can just whenever you see there is a value show up, you can manipulate that value. Okay. So that's the next trick I want to show you. Um, the third trick I think is really handy in messing model is X-ray. Uh, so if you turn on the x-ray, it basically tells you which point uh, is the anchor point you can manipulate. Uh, actually, if you click the points, you can see this dimension show up, and then you can type the dimension. I want this part to be 10 feet high. Then you can push this up to 10 feet. Right? So this works only for these anchor points. By using x-ray, you can turn on turn off these anchor points. So that's another trick. A um, next trick I think is more about uh, the zoom. Um, I think you used Revit before, maybe you know this already. Uh, the quick way to switch the view in Revit is you have this navigation cube. So you can switch from the top to the 3D, you know, south, north. Uh, so this is the quick way. And each time you switch the view, it's basically fit your selection or feed your view to zoom out to see the entire objects. But however, if you need a more precise control, you can always go here to this navigation menu and then you can do zoom to region, for example. You can drag a selection region. 
think is why it's not working. <laughs> Here we go. Right, you can zoom in. Uh, so this is another way you can sort of control uh, the region you want to zoom in. You can always use in the middle wheel to roll the middle wheel, but this one is not really accurate. Okay? So sometimes you do need to switch the reel uh, to zoom to fit. Uh, so that's that could be the way you can quickly navigate it. All right, I think this is all the tricks regarding how to navigate. Uh, and the next one I think might be also useful is when you create a really rough uh, shape, you can always add additions uh, by subdivide the model. Uh, so in this case, I can add an edge. So if I add an edge to this face in the front, right? So adding this new edge in the future, if I using the tab key, now I can use modify. You know, just make sure you click modify. I should be able to pick up this new edge I just added and then you can drag it. Uh, so this is the way you can somehow manipulate uh, the original geometry. Uh, so it's not very easy to use, but if you understand the tool is there, uh, sometimes you can do some pretty interesting shape. So here I can add a profile. Once you add a profile using the tab key, right? You can switch the selection, then you can move the edges forward, uh, make me move these edges backwards. So you can shape the you know the cube to something totally different. Right? So I would encourage you to play with it. Uh, maybe in this massing exercise, you want to do some shapes like you know cylindrical shape. Maybe some of the facade is not a box; is a you know tapered or even curved facade. So these are the options available here in Revit. Okay, um, yeah, I think this is the basic tricks. Uh, again, everything is covered in my pre-recorded video. Uh, so later you can watch these two videos. Um, I think this is probably enough for the introduction uh, of the matching model. Do you guys have any particular questions related to the matching? Yeah, if you never used it before, this might sound a little bit overwhelming, but you know, just go ahead, follow my tutorial. Uh, in this exercise, you don't have to worry about the window and the wall, right, or the roof. Uh, but the benefit for you know using the matching model is in the future, if you're ready to move on. For example, I really like uh, I really like this matching model, right? So next step, a couple of weeks later, I want to start to create a wall model with windows with roof using this matching model. It's pretty easy. You can take this matching model, then I will go to my architecture. I can easily create a wall based on my face, right? Based on the matching model. So here, wall from face. I can pick up this face. Then I should be able to model that. Control the top face of the walls, modify the constraints. Right. Now you have this wall right here. If I turn off the massing display. Okay, you see this was right here, right? And then you are able to create windows and other architectural details directly on top. Right. So this is a really simple approach. And same thing like if I turn on this massing again, in the future I want to create a roof, right? From this. I will go to architecture, I will create roof, I will pick a roof by face. So I will pick this face, right, and then it just automatically create right there. Uh, then I will create a roof. Do that. 
So now, if I turn off the massing, and you will see the roof and the wall. You see the benefit? That is the reason why I think the massing model you are working right now going to be really uh, valuable in the next step. It's, it's pretty easy. You can continue using the same model to shape, to adding details until you get the entire building done. All right. It also allow you to think about when you do um, create your massing model, right? You always should keep in mind is how exactly this matching model can be translated into the actual roof or wall, right? So if I create something like this, like a curved surface, you should think about how I can exactly build this. Maybe it's a curtain wall, maybe it's a concrete wall. But if you see some shape like this, you should ask yourself, right? Is this going to be just a concrete or this is something like a Zaha's, you know, titanium or Frank Gehry's, you know, super expensive building form. You should always keep in mind how exactly you translate this massing into uh, the actual building. All right, any questions? Yeah? Oh, in the chat box. Yeah, yeah, let me see. I'm not exactly can read because I'm recording <laughs> at the same time uh, doing the remote control on a CGC computer. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Yeah. Can you read? Yeah. Oh, when you start a new project, uh, I would go with architecture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yes, it is in the first video. Yep, it's already there. Yes, it's all there. Yeah, it's actually a pretty simple process. Uh, you just need to paint the surface and uh, you can define the material, then you identify the surface you want to paint. Uh, then they will show up. Yeah. Sure. Oh, for transparency, you, did a, you can choose a glass. Then this will be transparent. Other questions? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think it's okay if you want to, you know, think about doing Frank Gehry stuff right in the future. Uh, but I would ra rather in the first uh, studio, uh, you are doing the basic building form, uh, keep things simple. Uh, always think about how you exactly translate right, the form into architecture in the future. It's not just about sculptural value, but also the, you know, structure, the tectonic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing I think I forgot to mention is in Revit, you can 
you can log uh, the geometries. Uh, so that is actually one way you can keep the relationship of the pieces. Uh, so here, if I logged, you know, this upper piece with the roof, you will see when whenever I move the roof, uh, this upper piece will go with it. Uh, so that's a nice thing about this, uh, you know, kind of parametric nature of Revit. Uh, but if you, you know, unlock their relationship, uh, where is the unlock button? But anyway, you got the point is some, sometimes you want to maintain their relationships. Uh, in general, I, I feel Revit is probably not the best tool if you want to create some crazy form, but it's really robust uh, if you just want to have, you know, uh, ordinary building form. So here we can always, you know, create your geometry using our reference plan. You can always create void form if you need. Uh, the void form allow you to punch the openings through the building. Uh, so in the future, if you want to, you know, design something more complicated, you can think about using subtraction or the void as your language. Uh, to adding the complexity, right? So the form is not necessarily to be curve shaped. It could be just rectilinear, but you, you know, subdivide, you remove, you create a void. It could look really rich. Other questions? All right, if no questions, I will stop recording. Uh, so I will actually post this video online as well.